In September 2012, the British Museum's most famous natural mummy was taken out of the building for the first time in over a hundred years. One of the museum's oldest humans was about to be examined with the newest technology, and the results would be a revelation. Gebelain Man is one of a small group, six or seven bodies of this kind, which are in the British Museum.、Um, all of these came from the site of Gebelain in the 1890s. Gebelain Man himself was put on display. Straight away,、uh, and he's always attracted tremendous attention. We're about to take Jebelain Man to the Cromwell Hospital to have him CT scanned, and we hope to find out a lot more about his past biology, his past health, how old he was when he died, to get a better understanding of what it was like to live and die in pre-dynastic Egypt. His preservation is entirely due to natural. Processes. You would call a body like this a natural mummy. This is the area where you can see the scapula. It、yeah. has a dent in it in the medial border, and I'm not sure what's happening here. So that'd be an area maybe to to have a closer look. I won't have to talk to him, and I won't have to ask him questions, and we won't have to give him an injection, and also he won't hopefully won't be claustrophobic. <laughs> As far as I'm aware, pre-dynastic mummies have never been CT scanned before. Is it possible to look at the left, at the, yeah, the left scapula? Yeah. We found out that most of his bones appear to have just fused. The head of his humerus and the head of his femur, both of which suggest he's just finished growing, and he's probably died between the ages of 18 and 21. In the more traditional Egyptian mummy. Uh, all the internal organs have been taken out during embalming,、uh, sometimes put back in after they were preserved. But you will not ever see the brain because they didn't keep that. In the case of Gebelain Man, we would hope to see all these organs preserved just by drying. We have teams excavating、uh, in Egypt and in northern Sudan、uh, every year for months at a time, excavating both the towns people lived in and also the places they buried their dead. There's a real focus at the moment into trying to investigate what life was like for the ordinary Egyptians. This looks, this looks structural to me. See the way there's that line there. I think so much of the study of ancient Egypt has been about the temples and the tombs of kings and the、uh, the gold masks you had on the burials of pharaohs and so on. But that really was a very small part of the population. Maybe maybe less than one percent. What what about all the ordinary people, the the farmers that lived along the Nile?、Um, what was their health like? What, what was their life like? A month later, the British Museum team has come to the Natural History Museum to see the first results of the scans of Gebelain Man. Thanks very much for coming over. This this was originally going to be a a very quiet little、um, tete a tete,、um, sort of scientist to scientist sort of thing, but、um, it's sort of grown a little bit, which is which is great, and、uh, we're very pleased that you could all make it here. Groundbreaking real-time visualization technology, pioneered in Sweden. Is now installed on a new autopsy table, which can be used by the public.、Uh, if we actually take a slice from this direction, now look down inside the body and see a lot of the soft tissue. Well, I think it will be a fantastic tool to bring into the galleries. Our, our visitors will be able to explore this mummy, who's been known in our galleries for over a century. And as we all learn at school, the Egyptians took the the brain out through the nose as part of that artificial mummification process. So this fantastic tool, which is like a a virtual surgeon's knife, taking away the dome of the skull, and then the ability to see inside and, and the preservation of a a brain that's what over five thousand years old. Six thousand. Six thousand. Based on the way he's been treated, he should date to about thirty six hundred B C, maybe thirty seven. So. He's old, and it's so neat to to apply this new technology to something just this old, and to get these results to see potentially what he might have eaten on his last day. I mean, it's really very exciting. But what did happen on Gebelain Man's last day? He was young and robust, 
So what, or who, killed him? The skeleton and soft tissue, now revealed with digital technology, provide evidence for how this man died thousands of years ago. We did notice that a lot of the ribs have been broken all down, kind of a line. Yeah, you can see, but the, the, the one be below the, this area is quite interesting. In fact, you've got fragments which are still floating in, the, in soft tissue. This uh, shoulder bone had a big indentation in it. The rib immediately below also looks like it's been punctured, shattered into fragments which have embedded themselves into the muscle tissue and they're still embedded there today. The fracture pattern suggests that this was done when the bone was fresh, all of which points to him being stabbed in the back. very likely that what we've, we've had on display in the galleries for many, many years was uh, the victim of a murder. And it's only now that we're truly finding out who this person was. <laughs>